ಜಯತಿ ಪರಾಶರ ಸುನು ಸತ್ಯವತಿ ಹೃದಯ ನಂದನೋ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಯಸ್ಯ ಕಮಲಗಲಿತ ವಾಂಗಮಯ ಅಮೃತ ಜಗತ್ ಪಿಬತಿ ಭುಜಗ ಭೋಗಾಭ ಮುದ್ಯಮ್ಯ ಹೃದಯ ನಿಜಭುಜ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಲಕ್ಷಣಾಢ್ಯ ಲಲಿತ ಮುದ್ರಿಕ್ತ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮುದ್ರ ಭಜ ಭಜ ಅನಂತ ಇತ್ಯಾಲಪಂತ ಪ್ರಣತವಾನ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಾಣಭೂತ ಪ್ರಣತಿ ಪ್ರೀಣೇ ಪೂರ್ಣಬೋಧ ಭವದವೋಷ್ಣೇನ ತತಪ್ಯಮಾನ ಭುವಿ ಪರಂ ನಾಥಮಪ್ರೇಕ್ಷಣ ಭುವನಮನ್ಯನ ಅನ್ಯನ ದೋಷ್ಣತು ಭೀರ್ಮಾತಿ ನ ಸಾಂತ್ವಯಂತ ಪ್ರಣತವಾನ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಾಣಭೂತ ಪ್ರಣತಿ ಪ್ರೀಣೇ ಪೂರ್ಣಬೋಧ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಸಿವ್ ಯಜದೇವ ಪೂಜಾ ಸಂಗತೀಕರಣ ಧಾನೇಶು ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲಿ ಯಜ್ಞ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಅಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಫಯರ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇವ ಪೂಜಾ ಆರ್ ಅಪೀಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ದ ಐಡಲ್ or prayers chanted in mind is also yagna meditation is also yagna it is known as manasa yagna i am the power that controls the entire universe any rumination is yagna another meaning of yagna is sangathi karana which means spending time together when we travel to badri we come across many prayags such as rudra prayaga karna prayaga and the like what is this prayaga it is a confluence of two rivers or a sangati karana for example ganga yamuna saraswati meeting of two or three rivers is called yoga and they form some yoga yoga also is known as yaga likewise there is a confluence of people with different interests and hobbies participating in the yagna else in a city like mumbai each one has his own business there may be no opportunity to meet each other personal hassles immerse each individual we meet like this for lunch maybe once a year or so a meeting like this intends to save brahmanya with good intentions so this is a prayaga or a yagna we also call it sammilana so a meeting of 10 or more people for a noble goal is yagna yagna means to give or sacrifice a sacrifice offered to god through agni or god of fire is yagna therefore we can summarize that feeding the hungry and offering others what they need and do not have in any form is yagna what i have others may not have or what i do not have others may have sharing is also called yagna one can view our entire life as yagna but one must note that observing such noble deeds once in a while is not yagna yagna continuously maintains a cordial relationship with the good and shares what we have with others and is one of the important tenets of life seen in vedas all the above analysis portrays different aspects of the word yagna 
we must not disconnect from such practices assuming that it is irrelevant in the 21st century yagna means the awareness of something higher than us recalling in a sustained manner that there is something above us in a gathering like this is yagna the meaning of yagna revolves around these three things which enable us to find fulfillment in life all of you have different questions and now seek answers to the word yagna is it not a waste to perform such a ritual is it not a waste to pour so much ghee into the yagna pit we cover our noses as we pass through the slum area and wonder how to satisfy the hunger of so many many of us want to know if pouring the ghee into the fire is fair instead of feeding them we have lots of questions but no answers i observe there is a curious trend in asking questions amongst few some ask questions as if it is their profession the purpose of asking such question is not to seek but to express dissatisfaction as a result there are a lot of unnecessary discussions about this everywhere the biggest issue now is that we do not understand our limitations and interestingly we question something we do not know or understand asking questions to seek knowledge is valid but questioning to prove or disprove of someone else's point that is different i recall a saying in english he who knows not knows not he knows not he is a fool shun him we need to remember such meaningful thoughts we do not know the ancient practices of our ancestors 99.9999% of people do not know our traditions but we are not conscious that we are not aware we criticize and rebuke the practices instead we could at least be quiet or we must attempt to know we do not even try to learn as well what is the reason for this the ignorance of not knowing that we do not know not knowing is not a disqualification the tragedy is that we do not know that we do not know we may find the light of knowledge by seeking knowledge continuously our vaidika literature has stood strong for the past 10000 years it is not possible to determine the exact chronology of vedas imagine there was no civilization in the rest of the world 10000 years ago when man was foraging for his existence in the forest but in our land we already had a thriving society thousands of years ago the greatest tragedy is that we have no means to learn our ancient traditions we do not blame the people as they had no opportunity to learn our universities don't teach indology or indian studies we have to go to germany to learn indology one cannot take these courses in india heidelberg university in germany offers indology as a discipline to those who wish to learn and this is taught by germans and not the indians another issue is with our attitude towards our mother tongue we use many english words when we speak in our mother tongue 
using the wrong pronunciation of the language which is not native to us. We do not even know to pronounce Kannada correctly. For example, we interchange the word phala and phala and say that we offer phala to God. Some of them speak Kannada with an English accent. There is a feeling generally that it is prestigious to talk in English. We are still in the hangover of British rule. Those who do not speak English are second-rate Indians, which is a tragedy. One who speaks in Canada without errors is not valued, but the one who speaks in English full of mistakes is revered. It is shameful that there is no individuality or self-respect. This country will never develop if people imitate the West and forget their worth. We will never survive if imitation is what we do. What I mean is if any of us claim that we have learned Vedas or Vedic studies, it is through the translation of Max Müller from Germany. Unfortunately, the version we read about Vedic studies is that which is devoid of the reference to the original work. Therefore, this kind of Vedic knowledge is borrowed and not original. There is no proper structured Vedic study in our country now. Those who talk about Vedas are that of Max Müller's version. Max Müller presented a hypothesis that there were Aryans and the Dravidians, a theory structured by Max Müller. The theory was that the Vedic tradition is not Indian. Aryans migrated from another continent and settled in India. The plot was to prove that Vedic tradition is not native to India. The hypothesis is that there is this Indo-Aryan language. As per his theory, Sanskrit was part of the Aryan tradition. They do not want to accept that Sanskrit is the oldest language, surmising that it was born out of another European language. No one knows this mysterious language, nothing but a figment of imagination. To date, nobody has succeeded in finding a European language older than Sanskrit. This plot was to safeguard Max Müller's scheme to ascertain his country's dominance. But what can we say about our country where history is taught based on the surmises of this theory? We do not think independently nor try to find out the truth. Therefore, if there is anyone claiming to know Vedic literature, it is second-hand information. This knowledge is from the books written by Western writers and is useless to us. Many times, I have felt that we have lost contact with the original. There are atheists among the Westerners. Likewise, there are atheists amongst us too. But the Western atheists are better because delusion in their beliefs resulted from reading their scripture and religious literature. The atheists present amongst us have never read our sacred literature. Their criticism comes from the wrong hypothesis done on our tradition by Western scholars. Their condition is sad because they do not have first-hand information. They have never read. Their qualification is ignorance. 
I've mentioned many times that we need to be aware that we have lost touch with our consciousness. Atheists and theists in our country have the same qualification. Both have not read the original scriptures and have formed their own opinions. So, both of them have no value. We need to read and acquire adequate knowledge on the topic.